Hi everybody. Today I'm just going to uh, show a bit of how I uh, develop. Maybe develop is uh, a bit of a strange word for it, but how I uh, make the mod Half-Life 2 Chaos and what I uh, do on it and all that. This is kind of an awkward start. <laughs> I am the person who uh, does like 99% of the work related to this mod. There's been uh, a few other people who have made contributions, but it's mainly just me. <laughs> well, now this is really not going to move up. Alright, that, that works. That works for me. <laughs> so uh, my main my main way of finding issues to fix with Half-Life 2 Chaos is just to simply play it play it. Cause uh, it's, it's it's pretty much guaranteed that eventually I'll, I'll find something. Although it is kind of easier. It's kind of, no, it's not necessarily easier, but it's more interesting and um, insightful if I uh, watch other people play it, like just random streamers on like Twitch and YouTube. So I, I go and do that sometimes too. Whenever I see anyone just come across an error, I'll uh, go and look into it. So I'm, I'm not really sure if it's... Uh, reflected much in my upload schedule lately, but I haven't really been, um, well, I haven't really been editing too much lately. I've, uh, I've been working on, on videos, mainly, mainly one video, but I think, like, in the past, like, month or something, I've had, like, four different videos go up, so it doesn't look like I'm particularly busy with anything, I guess. But I am, in fact. Ha! Huh. For the past, like, month now, I've just been, like, I've spent the majority of my days working on uh, a single video. He did not animate. It came to my attention, let's say, that uh, it was time to make this video, and I've I've been wanting to make this particular video, not not this one, the the video that I have uh, started working on. Dude, that timing! I've wanted to work to make this video for a while now, and uh, just recently it came to my attention that I kinda sorta needed to do it like now or never because cause I don't want anybody else to do it first. Still got that. <laughs> Solid triggers can be really annoying sometimes like it, it really like depends on the, the the map and where you end up being when it starts. Sometimes it's totally fine, but other times you're just kind of stuck there for like 40 seconds. I try to minimize things like that, but like some things are just too good to pass up. Like, yeah, solid triggers can just completely halt your prog- oh my god, dude. <sighs> oh, it's so fun right now. Damn it. <laughs> ha! Other times, it's not so bad. I can do this. Uh, I can do this. I can do this. I'm not doing it. I, I can figure this out. He 
don't think I give save. Okay. okay. Bam. No. Um. Uh, that is a bug. These two effects are not supposed to be possible to be on at the same time. We'll just have to keep that on because I don't know why that happened. Oh. What? Is that a coincidence or is something weird happening here? Okay, that, that cannot be a coincidence. Something really weird is happening here. Interesting. Well, if this pattern continues, then I think next we'll see a uh, teleport to random place. Hmm. I don't know what to make of that. Um, that can't just happen. Nice. <laughs> ah! Dude, this is like the third time that we've had solid effects in this video. Thinking that's not right. And then vexing Vortigon again too. Yeah, I'm starting to think that there's something that's gone wrong with the uh, RNG code here. There's some kind of pattern here. Where? What? Dude, where's that Vortigon? I legit do not see a Vortigon anywhere. What? I think he might have spawned behind the wall there. Interesting. That is uh, usually not possible, however, uh, displacements are not solid all the way through. So. In this scenario, that could have happened. Uh, the effect picks are looking like they're normal again, so I don't know. You know what? I have a uh, command for this. Chaos test RNG. Let's, go ahead. Let's just run through the code a thousand times. This is what this does. That is taking a while. Okay, let's see here. Uh, what? Uh, these are looking pretty wonky. Let's try 10,000. Mm hmm. I'm seeing a pattern here where um, uh, these things here, like bumpy road, broken brakes, force in and out of vehicle, Remove random weapon. Uh, these are all things that require a vehicle. And since right now there is no vehicle, uh, they're not allowed to happen. But it looks like I've uh, messed up a bit of the RNG code for picking effects. And uh, it's just uh, basically just transferring the likelihood of these into the next effect down in the list of effects. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think that's, I think that explains that. That's what's great about programming, just the tiniest little thing can mess up everything. <laughs> Let's try a modest 2000. Okay, that's uh, looking a lot better. It was actually not fixed and I just thought it was because the RNG just happened to make it look that way. Fuck you, Monte Carlo. <laughs> oh. That's okay. I can deal with this. I'm a pro. What? What? 
No way. I swear, I've, I've seen so many people play the mod, and I've played it so many times myself, and I've never seen that happen twice in such quick succession. So this is where the mod uh, decides where to place an NPC that it wants to spawn. Uh, it's just a certain distance in front of the player. So what I want to do here is uh, check, basically just uh, look in that area in front of the player to see if there is some kind of obstruction. And that's not very difficult to do. We'll make a line that starts uh, where the player is, and then the vec origin. It's, it's pretty simple. go back to that same place and try that again. Uh-huh. Annoying Alex is 46. All right. I guess that's fixed then. <laughs> Nothing personnel, kid. I'm so funny. So before I end this video, I want to add in a new feature of some sort. And uh, one thing that I've wanted to, to do for a while is do something for this effect called Left for, Left for Dead. So um, Half-Life 2 NPCs, they work off of these things called nodes. You can see them here. Every one of these uh, places where you see these lines converging, that is a node. And uh, NPCs use these node things to know where they can go in a map. That's... That's interesting. And uh, the effect left for dead uh, works by using these nodes. This is the effect of Left for Dead, in case you're not familiar. It just spawns uh, a bunch of zombies at every node in, in like a general vicinity of you. You get the idea. In this case it was uh, pretty manageable to uh, deal with most of them. Uh, depending on the map, uh, nodes can be placed a lot more densely, and in those cases it can be a lot more difficult to deal with Left 4 Dead. was I talking about? Right, so I wanted to try a new way of spawning in these zombies, a way that doesn't make them as annoying to deal with. Instead of just uh, spawning them at the nearest 20 nodes, I want to try spawning them at just random nodes that are not currently visible. I don't know if that'll be very good or not. We'll have to see. Currently, I don't feel like it would be a good idea to uh, completely replace what I already have done here. I just want to try this out for a bit. I'm, I'm just going to have it randomly choose between uh, the old way 
and the new way. So uh, this chaos RNG one, this is a uh, console command, console variable that I uh, use to control certain bits of RNG. It just makes the uh, development process a bit easier. If it, this console variable is set to negative one, then it's a completely random chance. But um, if it's set to anything other than that, then the code will just obey whatever RNG value we've put in here. So in short, it just overrides the RNG. Old way and new way. First, I need to know how many nodes there are in a map. And I can really just um, none, none nodes. So, when, uh, so every node in a map has to have a certain ID number associated with it. All of those IDs are uh, between zero and the number of total nodes that are in the map. Although there is an ID zero, so I think we need to subtract one there. So a random integer between zero and the number of nodes, minus one, that will give us the ID for a random node just anywhere in the map. I'm going to do something a bit uh, technically risky, but practically not actually that bad. If we find that any given node, if the player can't see that node, then we'll spawn an NPC at it. But if they can see it, then we'll just move on to some other node and we'll just uh, try to find another node. And one simple way to just move on to finding another node is to just repeat that bit of code until you find a node that will work. But there is a hypothetical scenario where a player could see every single node in a map at the same time, but that's not going to fucking happen. Uh, we also need to actually uh, get the node object from that uh, node ID. Very pretty line of code I've written there. Now we have to figure out if uh, the player can see this. And that works essentially the same as that other thing where I fixed NPCs spawning inside walls. Um, sort of line at get local um, get um, um, you know what? Just do origin plus sixty-four. Good enough. So we start the line at where the player's camera is, and we go to where the node is. Uh, nodes are pretty close to the ground, so yeah, I think that'll be good. There could be scenarios where um, the player itself might not see the node because it's like, they're like over a ledge or something. And if we just put the point that we want to trace to a bit in the air, then that won't be a problem. This mask visible, this will make it so that the line will pass through things that can be seen through, like windows and grating. So we don't accidentally spawn NPCs like right behind a window or something like that. And now we'll uh, look at the result of the trace. Uh, if we hit any kind of object at all, then that means that we'll consider the node good to spawn in a, a, a zombie at because the player probably cannot see that location. I might also make a consideration for length, but I'm not totally sure. Like if a node is a certain distance away, then that place would probably be obscured by fog. And now we can actually spawn the NPC. You might wonder what the heck is going on here. Uh, so in episode one, they added uh, zombines. And you can't just spawn a zombine in Half-Life 2 without doing some prior work to uh, make them work in Half-Life 2. They only work in episode one and episode two. And I, I could just do the work 
to do that, but I don't really feel like doing that right now. And uh, in episode two, same thing happened with fast zombie torsos. So we have to check and see if we're in ep2 chaos or ep1 chaos. And in that case, uh, we will be allowed to spawn zombines and fast zombie torsos, depending on which mod we're in. And this is what this does. This figures out which mod we're in. Uh, we can kind of simplify this code here because it won't be applicable, I'm pretty sure. There are some certain considerations that had to be made for uh, the old way because sometimes the RNG would just kind of be weird and spawn 20 of like the same type of zombie. No idea why. I seriously don't know why that would happen. Never figured that out. So there is one last thing I want to do before we test this, and that is to change the name of the uh, effect. We'll call this Left 4 Dead 2, even though it's still the same effect. I'm funny like this. Let's uh, go and try it out. Uh, what is effect number again? 34? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I forgot to, uh, make this, uh, get the hell out of here. Get out of this wild true. <laughs> Oops. Break. Actually, you know what? Just return, because the job's done then. I prefer to test things on this specific map, because... It has a good variety of things going on with it, and, yeah. Uh-huh. So, of course, we, we now have to go and find where that zombie is. Not over here. Where are you? Are there even nodes over here? Could be in here. No. Thank you, Marco. Oh. Oh. No. Come back up, Dr. Freeman. The car's on the pier. Uh-huh. So, uh, that appears to be good. However, instead of, uh, having that spawn a, 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 a single zombie at this part, we want it to, uh, spawn continuously. We want it to spawn zombies uh, the entire time that the effect is going on. But that does mean we need to add a uh, time console command console variable for this. Uh, we don't want this to be instantaneous, we want it to be sustained. So um, instead of running this code in the function start effect, which you, you, you can probably guess from the name what's what's going on here, we, we, we need to actually put it in a place where it will run continuously. And that also means that we'll have to store a boolean to actually remember whether we're doing the old way or the new way. Okay, so now uh, this code for spawning a zombie should be running uh, once every second instead of just one time at the start of the effect. Okay. Uh-huh. Seems like it's working. I have yet to see one spawn right in front of my eyes, which is a good sign. <laughs> Okay. 
Everything seems to be working fine here. I thought it might be good to do one quick test in episode 2 as well. Because uh, that has zombines and fast zombie torsos. Ah, this is the old effect. Which I predicted would uh, show up eventually. Because that's how I programmed it. So, so far I have not seen any zombies, which is kind of weird to me. Oh, there's one. Ow. This is a, uh, like a, much, a much more complex map, geometrically. So uh, maybe we'll just have to wait a bit till we find them all. Should have spawned like close to 80 of them. So, presumably, we'll find them all if we just uh, keep going. And if Mr. Vortigaunt here does not kill himself, can you just die already? Just die. Oh my god, dude. It's like fucking reverse ski ball or something. Yeah, there's more of them here. Oh no. Did, did that zombie torso just jump down? What the fuck? never seen that. I, I've never even seen a zombie, a, a regular zombie jump. What? Much less a torso. What the fuck? Kind of weird that there's so many of them here, but we saw very few uh, up there in the caves. That doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong with the code, though. It could, it could, it could just be RNG being weird. It could also be the case that there just aren't as many nodes in the cave areas. You know what? Why don't we go and look at that while we're uh, playing here? Oh yeah, a lot more. Yeah, that explains it. Ah, so beautiful. There is there is a decent amount of nodes here. I don't, I don't know what to make of it. Eh, I guess the RNG was just kind of weird, maybe. Well, like, I mean, compared to this, like, like obviously this is way more dense than that. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna call this good. So there is one last thing that we have to do, and that is, since we've now turned Left 4 Dead into something that has a time associated with it, we need to add that time convar into the CFG file so that uh, people can easily find the console variable and change it if they want to.
that's not very important. It's just done. And like, three ones here. That's not just eight. Three ones here. So long. And then, uh, since there are three separate mods, I have to add this to three separate files. Kind of annoying, but it's whatever. It's just uh, what we have to deal with. Uh, if you ever saw Vine Sauce play Half Life 2 Chaos, uh, he had a lot of technical issues, and part of that was because of autoexec.cfg acting up. And I, I never knew for sure what uh, exactly went wrong with that. Like, the, the it, it works. Like, the file works for me. So, like, I don't, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Like, he didn't show exactly how he changed it. What I think happened was uh, I originally had the, the comments for each console variable like this, just all in one line like this. And I think what happened was Vinny went in and he was like, yeah, I'm just gonna double click that, set this to uh, like 30 or whatever. And uh, this, this will get in interpreted as part of the uh, value if there is not a space here. Oh shit, I, <laughs> oops, that would have been silly. That's why you check yourself. That's not important. So yeah, um, I'll end this video now. Thanks for watching. Uh, if people like this, I might do it again sometime, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure how people will uh, receive this, but you know, that's why you do it. So yeah, bye.